Today we're going to talk about a vitamin called vitamin K and its role in both blood clotting and potentially in cardiovascular disease. We're going to talk about how vitamin K was first identified, how it functions to support a particular chemical reaction called glutamate carboxylation, and then we're going to talk about why it's so important for the function of blood clotting factors. We're then going to talk about the role of arterial calcification and some of the emerging data about how vitamin K may play a role in cardiovascular disease. Vitamin K was first discovered entirely experimentally. This is in contrast to some vitamins we've talked about before, such as vitamin B, vitamin D, which were discovered due to deficiencies causing diseases such as pellagra or rickets or beriberi. It was quite common in the 1920s where people would feed experimental animals synthetic diets where they could control exactly what the animals were eating. They could then identify if something was missing and it had an effect on biology. Henrik Dam, shown here on the right, was doing a study on chickens on a particular synthetic diet. And he noticed that on this particular diet, he noted hemorrhages. This was due to excessive bleeding due to a defect in blood clotting. He then identified a particular substance, which he named vitamin K, after the German word for coagulation. The structure and synthesis of vitamin K was discovered by Edward Doisy in 1939, and it's shown here on the bottom. When you added the substance back to the synthetic diet, the hemorrhages and the defects in clotting disappeared. Vitamin K actually exists as several vitamins, several different forms that have functionally anticoagulant properties. Shown here are K1, K2, K3, and K4. As you can see, the left-hand side of the structures are identical, but the right-hand fatty acid chains are different, depending on their level of saturation and their length. The main role for vitamin K is to serve as a cofactor for a particular enzyme called gamma glutamyl carboxylase. This enzyme uses vitamin K and causes a carboxylation of a particular glutamate residue on select proteins, as you can see on the right. Normally a glutamate residue has one carboxyl group, but after the reaction now has two carboxyl groups. Vitamin K can be recycled and can be used as a cofactor many times over. Not very many proteins actually undergo gamma glutamyl carboxylation. In fact, there's right now only 26 proteins that we know are carboxylated in this particular manner. Blood clotting is a complex pathway, and it can be stimulated through either surface contact in the intrinsic pathway or through tissue damage in what's called the extrinsic pathway. This causes a cascade of proteolytic reactions, which activate enzymes in a series of events which result in the activation of fibrin and the formation of a stable fibrin clot. All of these factors are important for formation of blood clots. While only 26 proteins undergo gamma glutamyl carboxylation, four of those 26 are involved in this clotting pathway, factor 9, factor 8, factor 10, and prothrombin. This carboxylation is essential for the biological function, and if you do not have the gamma-dependent carboxylation, which requires vitamin K, factor 9, 8, 10, and prothrombin are inactive. This is why people who are deficient in vitamin K are at high risk of bleeding, because they are unable to form the stable fibrin clots. Highlighting this is a rare genetic deficiency of GGCX, gamma glutamyl carboxylase. Shown here is a pedigree, where you can see carriers and homozygotes from a particular family. The three people on the bottom who are homozygous loss of function for GGCX all had excessive bleeding at a very early age. This was because they were unable to make factor 8, 9, 10, and prothrombin, and therefore unable to form blood clots when needed. There have been other suggested roles for vitamin K, for example, in bone mineralization. And that's because two key hormones which are involved in bone mineralization also undergo gamma glutamyl carboxylation dependent on vitamin K. This is osteocalcin and matrix GLA protein. It's been long known that low levels of dietary vitamin K is associated with lower risk of fracture. So that suggested that vitamin K may play a role in bone formation. It's suggested that osteocalcin plays a role to prevent mineralization in arteries. So normally, when you want calcium deposition, you want it to occur only in bone. Osteocalcin functions to ensure that you don't get calcification of arteries. If you do get overcalcification of arteries, that can increase the risk of atherosclerosis and decrease vascular reactivity, so that there's a higher blood pressure and higher risk of a coronary event. However, it's not clear that whether or not vitamin K supplementation is effective in reducing bone mineralization at this stage, and research is ongoing in this point. It's also not clear exactly if vitamin K plays a role in bone formation at the level of bone. Part of the reason for this lack of understanding is that vitamin K deficiencies are actually very rare. Most people exceed the RDA, even without trying for vitamin K. That's because vitamin K is abundant in many foods that we normally consume. We also, as we showed in the biochemical reactions, can recycle vitamin K. So one vitamin K molecule can be used to synthesize many new proteins. 
In addition, there's no known toxicities with excessive consumption of vitamin K, so therefore it's hard to understand exactly what's going on. Since very few people are deficient in vitamin K, it's very hard to perform supplementation studies to understand what vitamin K is doing biologically. In summary, vitamin K is a hormone that definitely plays a role in blood clotting. This is because of the role of gamma glutamyl carboxylase, which causes the carboxylation of glutamate residues, and these glutamate residues that are carboxylated are common in many blood clotting factors. There's also potentially a role in calcification, especially in arterial calcification, which could play a role in cardiovascular disease, although the role for vitamin K in that is still not clear. Although vitamin K deficiencies are rare, it is still an essential nutrient. We just happen to be able to consume enough of it that most people aren't deficient in it.